Hi, this is Susan Elliott, author of Getting Past Your Breakup and Getting Back Out There. I'm here today to talk to you about a blog post that I wrote a long time ago on Getting Past Your Breakup blog and has been on the Psychology Today blog since June. This post on Psychology Today alone has received over 300,000 views since June. And in the time that it was on the Getting Past Your Breakup blog, it received much more than that. It is without a doubt the most popular post on getting back out there and getting past your breakup. And on Psychology Today, it was in the number one spot of all articles, which is by the hundreds, for over four months. So this is something that speaks to people, that resonates with people. It has over 200 comments, and I've received over 100 private emails about it. I think that why it's so popular is because people need to realize that when the person you love doesn't love you, it's time to do what the article suggests, which is to reject the rejector. It's very important, so important, that the only way that you're going to be able to move on from somebody who doesn't love you the way you want to be loved, who doesn't love you the way you love them, is that you have to start rejecting the rejector. There's many things that keep us from doing this. The number one thing is that you search and you search and you think and you think that there's something you can do to make this person care about you again. You become obsessed with it. You start thinking you'll change, you'll do better, you'll be this, you'll be that, I'll be thinner, I'll be more outgoing, I'll write to his mother, you know, I'll, I'll become friends with her brother, I'll do this, I'll do that. And now is the exact wrong time to be doing that. You shouldn't have to change for someone else to love you. You should know who you are and you should believe in who you are and you should feel confident that you're the right person for the right person who will appreciate you. And that's number one on the list. You have to have someone who appreciates you. And if someone's walking out the door, they don't appreciate you. And there is somebody who will. I am a big believer in don't change for somebody else. But there's a caveat to that. If you're in a relationship and you know there's things on you, you know, about you that you need changing, perhaps you've had issues with this this trait or habit or whatever it is in other relationships and somebody might bring it to your attention, you might want to change if you think that this is going to be the end of your relationship. Only if you've thought about it before, only if you've recognized, yes, this is a detriment to my relationships and maybe I should do something about it. If you're in a relationship with somebody you really care about and they're starting to say, look, hon, you know, look, babe, look, sweetie pie, you know, look, boo, this is the thing that's really, you know, an issue for me and I really need you to do something about it. If it's something that you are, that, who is basically innately you, or something that you like about yourself, you know, then maybe you're in the wrong relationship. But if it's something that has destroyed relationships before, that other people have brought to your attention and you've thought over the years, yeah, maybe I should do something about it. That's, you know, a decent time to change something about yourself. But if somebody's walking out on you and you think, oh, you know, I... <clears throat> excuse me, I should have done something before they left, you know, after they leave, and I should change, I should do what they wanted me to do, that is not the time to do it. You change for you, not to keep somebody else interested in you and change in a way that they want you to change that you've never considered changing. I remember when I had separated from my ex and he had always had a problem with the fact that I can't bowl. And, you know, the big Lebowski, I am not. So when he got into his new relationship, a few months later, he came to me and said, you know, yeah, we bought our own bowling balls and we joined a bowling league. I was crushed, crushed. I was like, oh my God, he found someone who bowls and I'm so deficient because I don't. 
Like, what's wrong with me? And I actually thought, like, I should go out and learn how to bowl. No. I hate bowling. I don't like it. I can do candle pin, but the big balls? No, no. I cannot do it. So I was dragging around for days. And then I went out to breakfast with some friends of mine, and I was just sitting there kind of depressed. And one of my friends said, what's wrong with you? And I said, my ex bought a bowling ball. And they all burst out laughing. And I was like, what is so funny? This is not funny. This is the end of the world. And the only thing that's the end of the world is the end of the world. I don't like bowling. I don't want to bowl. They have matching bowling balls. Good for them. Yay. Let's move on. It's hard and it hurts when someone you love doesn't love you. But it's time to reject the rejector. It's time to say, screw you, buddy, in, you know, more ways than one. It's time for you to focus on you. It's time for you to realize, like, you're, you're a pretty good deal. Somebody should be glad to have you. Not sit there and worry about what's wrong with you. Sure, the time in between relationships is a time where you should be working on yourself. Or you should be trying to become a better person for you and for the person who's right for you. Not for the person that walked out the door. One of the things that you have to start doing is to realize that the right person will not leave. You should have a checklist in Getting back out there, there's a checklist, standards and compatibility list. I wanted to put it in getting past your breakup, but there's a lot of things that I wasn't able to put in getting past your breakup because the book would have been 500 pages long and nobody's going to be buying a book of that size unless you're an encyclopedia nut. So I put the standards and compatibility inventory in getting back out there. So you should have a list of things that you must have in a relationship. Things that would be nice to have and things that you absolutely do not want. When I did mine, I was like, I don't want somebody who bowled or who made a big deal out of bowling. Ridiculous. I didn't want somebody who was going to say one thing and, and do the other. I didn't want somebody who was going to tell me what I was thinking. I, I wanted all these things. I had my must-haves. I had my nice-to-be-haves. And I had my cannot-have. And I also had, and I talk about this in the book, would be nice to have. I'd really like to have it, but could change it for the if the right person comes along. And one of those things was being very neat and clean. I wanted somebody who's very neat and clean. When I met my late husband, he was the biggest slob in the world. And what we did was we compromised to get a cleaning person because I didn't want to be cleaning up after him all the time because he really was a slob. But I really wanted things neat and clean. Most people I would not have changed that requirement for, but he was worth it. Anyway... When you make your list of standards and compatibility, the first thing must be loves me, doesn't want to leave me, thinks I'm the best thing since the folded napkin. If the person's already left, they're not the person for you. Scratch that off. The minute you scratch off number one, they become beside the point. Beside the point. Reject the rejector. I know it's hard and I know it, it hurts. This is part one of Reject the Rejector. I will be back with part two very shortly. But I want you to start thinking about it. I want you to start thinking that even though you're crushed, even though you're full of heartache, even though you, you feel like your world is collapsing, the person who is for you, who loves you, who is your soulmate, who is the right person for you, would not do what this person has just done. And forget about their rejection. Forget about what they're saying about you. Because a lot of times people walk out the door because they, and on their way out, they're like, and another thing, you're a jerk and you're an idiot and you're an asshole and I hate you and you never clean up and you make me talk to your mother and you make me go to picnics with people you work with. I hate those people. So they walk out the door and all you can think of, oh my God, I should have never made him go to a work picnic. What am I thinking? No, that's not right. So let's forget all of those and work on other things. Be back with part two of when the person you love doesn't love you and reject the rejector. If you want to read it, you can go on the Psychology Today blog and the 
It's the Getting Back Out There blog, and the name of the post is When the Person You Love Doesn't Love You. Otherwise, you can stay tuned for part two of the video. Thank you.